Escapes. In its short history, Australia has had more than its share of bushrangers. Some of these bandits were criminals of the worst type. Others embarked on a life of crime, more perhaps from unfortunate circumstances than at the urge of vicious natures. But among Australian bushrangers, the Kelly gang stands out. Their career started with the issue of a warrant for the arrest of Dan Kelly on a charge of cattle stealing. There's someone riding up to the house, Dan. Let's look. It's Trooper Fitzpatrick, Kate. He must have come to arrest you about that cattle duffing. Where's Ned? He's out at the back of the house. I'll go and get him. No, it's too late. Good day, Dan. Good day, Kate. Good day, Jack. What do you want, Trooper Fitzpatrick? I want Dan here to come for a ride with me. Where? You know well enough. To Vanilla. Well, Dan, are you coming quietly? I was just going to eat my dinner, Jack. Will you wait till I've finished? All right, Dan. If Kate will give us a kiss... Give us a kiss, Kate. Let me go, you beast. Let her go, Jack. Oh, no harm, men. Just a bit of fun. What are you doing with my sister, Fitzpatrick? Oh, here's Ned. He'll fix you. I've come to take Dan back to Vanilla. What for? You know well enough. Cattle duffing. Have you got a warrant? No, but I reckon this revolver will do instead. No one arrests my brother without a warrant. Put your hands up, Jack. Drop that revolver. Oh, oh you've killed him, Ned. No. Just shot him in the wrist. You'll pay for this, Kelly. Next time, don't go playing around with revolvers, Jack. Here, Kate. You better tie his wrist up. What are you going to do, Ned? You'll have all the troopers after you now. Me? I'll just go into the ranges and get all this blows off. Send for me, Superintendent. Yes, McIntyre. I'm sending out a party of four men to bring in the Kellys. A party? Arrest those boys? It's just possible that they might give trouble. They've been joined by Steve Hart and Joe Byrne now. You don't expect them to resist arrest? Oh, they'll probably fire a few shots to show off. If they give in without a struggle, their friends will laugh at them. Come in. I make him die. What's the matter with you? It's the Kellys. They're all dead. Who's dead? The Kellys? No. The troopers. Kennedy, Scanlon, and Lonigan. All of them except me. My God. They came into our camp while the others were away and bailed me up. And murdered the others? I called on them to surrender first. It was fair fight. Are you fit to ride, McIntyre? Yes. All right. I'll get a party together, and you can lead us out to the scene of the city. But for many weeks, no trace of the Kellys could be found. They had taken refuge in the Strathbogie Ranges. And they had for their hiding place 11,000 square miles of tangled and roadless hills with swift creeks, unknown valleys, and vast stretches of scrub. So far, even when murdering the troopers sent against them, they had acted purely in self-defense. But now they embarked on a career of active crime. Making some 50 prisoners, they bailed up the bank at Euroa and escaped with 2,000 pounds. A few months later, they took possession of the township of Geraldery, locking the troopers in their own cells and looting the bank. Under the spur of strong public criticism, the police did all they could to bring the Kellys to book, even importing black trackers from Queensland. But all was in vain until one day, Ned rode into the camp with me. I've got a bit of news for you, boys. What is it, Ned? Aaron Sterrett's helping the police. Aaron Sterrett turned informer? I don't believe it. It's a fact. My own mother saw him helping the police to lay an ambush. We gotta stop it, Ned. Sterrett knows too much about us. We'll kill him. Listen, I got an idea. What? Aren't you getting a bit tired of being chivied here, there, and everywhere by the police? What do you think? And we're running short of boodle, ain't we? We could do with a bit of money. All right. Dan and I will kill Sterrett in his house at Woolshed. While we're doing that, you and Steve hold up Glen Rowan. What? Me and Ned hold up the owl of Glen Rowan by ourselves? Sure, you can do it easy. Didn't you hold up Geraldery? All you do is round up anyone that's unreasonable. Look him in the hotel and keep him there. Then you wait till Dan and I arrive. But Woolshed is 40 miles from Glen Rowan. That's all right. We'll cover it in three hours. Just a minute, Joe. When the police hear about Sterrett, they'll send a special force against us. By train. And Glen Rowan is the nearest railway station to Woolshed. They'll get off the train at Glen Rowan 
And then we'll be trapped. No, we won't. Why not? You know that sharp curve the railway line takes just outside Glen Rowan? Yeah. Well, we'll tear the line up there. The train will fall down the embankment. Oh, I care, John. We'll be on the embankment. And them that ain't killed by the fall will shoot. But, Ned, that'd be murder. Well, the troopers are trying to murder us, ain't they? I reckon they'll be more careful after this. It's a good idea, Joe. Now, today's Wednesday. On Saturday night, you and Dan ride over to Woolshed and do stare at him. While Steve and I bail up Glen Rowan. Who's there? It's me, Dan Kelly. What do you want, Dan? Dust die, all traitors! He's dead, Dan. Come on, get on our horses and make for Glen Rowan. There's another one, Ned. Uh, who's he? He's the school teacher. Kernow's his name. Good day, Mr. Kernow. So you're the school teacher? Uh, yes, Mr. Kelly. Uh. Well, I want you to give the children holiday tomorrow. A uh, holiday? Why? In honor of the visit of Ned Kelly to Glen Rowan. <laughs> All right, Kernow, get in there with the others. How many is that now, Steve? Fifty, all told. All right. We've got all of them as might be misguided enough to start trouble. Who's that? It's Dan and Joe Byrne. Ah. Did you kill Aaron Sterrett? Yeah. So die all traitors. Have you torn up the railway line? Yes. We got the telegraph operator in here. When we hear that train coming, we'll go out to the embankment and kill off them troopers that's been chasing us the last two years. Listen, Ned. I think I can hear the train. Yes, Joe. All right, boys, put your armor on, and we'll go out and finish them off. We must be getting near Glen Rowan now, Superintendent. Yes, but I suppose it's only another false alarm. The scene of the crime is 40 miles from Glen Rowan. Yes, sir. They'll be in the hills long before we get there. The train is beginning to stop. Something must be the matter. Look, there's a man beside the track with a red lantern. Come on, we'll see what's the matter. What's the matter? Why have you stopped the train? The Kellys have torn up the railway line. The Kellys? Where are they? In the hotel. Come on, Steele. We've got them cornered at last. Oh, wait a minute. How many troopers have you got? Forty. And there's ten more coming from Benalla. The Kellys have armor. Armor? They made it from nail kicks. And they reckon it's full of The train stopped, Ned. That means someone must have warned them the line was up. All right. Come on, all of you. Dan and Steve and Joe, we'll line up on the veranda. Give the police a warm welcome, eh, Ned? Uh, that's right. Then we'll get out the back and be on our horses and off. We needn't be frightened of the police bullets now, eh? No. Put your helmet on, Steve, and we'll wait for them on the veranda. Well, there's the hotel, Superintendent. Yes, sir. Come on, Steve. Let's get in. Now, if I know the Kellys, they'll have a few shots at us. And then get out the back way. Why not surround the hotel? We've plenty of men. All right, Steele. You take 30 men and put them round the back and the sides. And then come back here to me. That's the Kellys firing. They must have seen us. Quick with your men. Round the sides and the back. I've got the hotel surrounded, sir. Good. I think we hit one of them while they were away. Where are the other three? I can't see them. They've gone back inside the hotel. I've sent a wire down to Melbourne for a field gun. We'll blow them out. It'll be hours before a field gun could be get, got here, sir. I've got a better idea than that. What? Where are you going? The hotel's made of wood. I'll set fire to it. Come back! You'll be shot! I've set it a light, sir. Good well. I don't know why you weren't killed. They'll soon be smoked out now. Well, we are ready for them. They can't get away. Look, sir, there's one of them coming down the steps. He's got a helmet on. I'll have a shot at him. I could have sworn I'd hit him then. It's his armor. It just sheds the bullets. Look out, sir, he's coming for us. I'll get you, you swab. The whole lot of you. I'll get you. He'll have you, Steele. No, he won't. Ah, I've got him. Hit him in the leg. You surrender, Ned? Uh, I, I surrender. I... How did you hit me? With a shotgun. That wasn't fair. No use shooting at your legs with a rifle. Where's the rest of them? Steve Hart and Joe Byrne is dead. And where's Dan? Well, you got me, Steele. 
I suppose it's the Engman's noose for me. Yes, Ned, you'll be hanged all right. But where's your brother, Dan? Oh, don't worry about him, Steele. You'll never catch him now. But is he in the hotel? I'm not letting on. But he's somewhere where the police will never catch him. And so ended the career of the Kelly Gang, illustrating the old adage that crime does not pay. When the police investigated the burning hotel, they found the remains of Steve Hart and Joe Byrne. The remains of a third body were discovered. But whether they were all that was left of Dan Kelly, or were, as Ned maintained, the remains of a swagman who was killed accidentally, will never be known. Whether or not Dan Kelly made his escape from the hotel, he certainly, unlike his brother Ned, escaped the hangman's noose.